My sister is 30 and is married to a man she and our family love. They've said they wanted to be child-free since they met four years ago. They had a nice life where they both worked, had a dog, a nice house, etc. About a year ago, he found out that he had a son. The mother was an acquaintance he slept with six years ago, who had never told him about him. Unfortunately, she passed away and her elderly mother has too many health issues for her to have custody, so he went to live with them. He's an amazing little kid and our family has grown to love him too. So we were all shocked a month ago when my sister said she and her husband were going to separate. She said that she loves her husband but she can't take being a stepmother anymore and that everything from not being able to watch adult shows at all hours of the day to asking him to do his homework makes her miserable. Her husband is devastated as they've always had a happy marriage and still love each other. She'll be the first to say this. He didn't want children either, but understands he's the only parent this boy has now. I also found out that this little boy is taking the fact that she's moving out and taking their dog, she was hers originally, very hard, no doubt due to the loss he's already experienced, and I feel devastated by that. When we were at our parents' house last weekend, I sat her down and asked to talk to her, and after some back and forth, I told my sister it seemed wrong and selfish to hurt not only her husband, but also her stepson this way after not even a full year of trying to make it work. So I told her she was making a mistake. She didn't take that well and hasn't spoken to me since. Essentially, she said she's never wanted children and wants no part of raising one and that I have no right to call her wrong or selfish over that. My family seems to agree with me on this, but my mom is very upset that my sister is furious with the family members that agree with me and me. Am I the idiot? You don't actually know what her life has been since the boy came to live with them. She didn't sign up to raise a child, do his laundry, take him to school, help with his homework. She doesn't want to be any parent. That's her right. She tried for almost a year. She's not happy with the situation, so she's leaving. What do you want her to do? Stay and be miserable? Dig herself into a depression to raise a child she never wanted? Do you think it would be better for the kid to live with someone who doesn't want to live with him? Who doesn't want to take care of him? who resents him because she has to change her lifestyle over her husband's decision before they even met. Not having a mother is better than having a bad mother. You are the idiot, OP. You have nothing to do with this but insist on making your opinions known when your sister didn't ask for your help or advice. Since you feel the need to stick your nose in their business, I trust you're helping the village raise this child. Yes? Surely you are. So how much are you going to contribute to the situation you feel is your right to comment on. Honestly, your lack of empathy for your sister is astounding. Please remember that people are always stricter with their moms about things like this. If anything goes on with that child, they will ask what she was doing wrong first, even though he's her husband's child. You need to apologise to your sister and support her in an extremely difficult time. Their family situation is not about you. Man, I'm sad for this little boy. But if this is a deal breaker for your sister, then you have to respect that. She's upfront, and she's not making a husband choose between her and his kid. You are the idiot for guilt tripping her over this. Your brother in law is young enough to meet someone who would be okay with kids and being a step parent, so you can keep loving the boy as well. My 26 male nephew is pre tween and has a habit of stealing things. Brother and sister in law got in trouble a few times at stores because he'd leave with something in his pockets. But of course, because he's a kid, they usually just say he forgot he had it. Even at school, my brothers told me they've had to come to talk to the principal on a couple of occasions. It doesn't seem like they've done anything to stop it. They had to come to stay here with me because my brother lost his job, and they weren't going to make it with all their bills, including rent. He's doing Uber right now while he searches for a job, and they can move out. I didn't want to because of my nephew specifically, but family is family. A month ago, I finally bought an engagement ring for my girlfriend that I was planning on proposing to soon, but now I don't know. It's a $4,000 ring that I spent over a year saving up for. It's been hidden in my room under one of my drawers. When I found him snooping in my room, I told my brother to control his kid, then got one of those cheap spy cams in my room just in case. Then last week, I noticed it was out of its box. After checking the cam, it showed he was in there again when I wasn't home. My brother and his wife have yelled at him. He says he left it by the TV in the guest room, but it's not there. They looked through all their stuff and his too, 
I know he's lying about not having it because that's the same thing he said about one of my watches he took, then finding it. On the second day, my brother tells me they can't find it, and I told him either they find the ring or he repays me the $4,000 I spent on it. If not, they can't stay here anymore. My brother got really upset. He told me I know how their situation is right now, and yeah, it's a tough spot. But I couldn't ignore the fact that his kid, whom he can't parent, took something extremely important to me that cost a lot of time and money. They were given a week to leave my house if they didn't find the ring. They have to stay at a cheap motel, but my brother won't stop begging to come back because what they're paying right now each night is coming directly out of their savings. He won't stop calling me heartless about letting something like this come between helping them out through a difficult time, and my nephew keeps saying he's sorry. It's just hard right now to want them around. I don't even know what to do about the ring, and every time I think about it, it makes me so mad that it's hard to care about their situation. Does that make me an idiot? OP, they sold the ring. I'm sorry. File a police report. You have the proof on camera, and if it gets pawned, the police will be able to track it back to you. Check out some pawn shops on your own. Your brother knew that his son stealing things was a problem, and he was already caught poking around in your room once. So, as sad as it is, your brother being homeless is a direct result of him not being able to control his own son. They knew the kid had a tendency to steal things, so it was only a matter of time before he took something expensive or important. Your nephew can be sorry all he wants, but you're still out $4,000, and there's absolutely no guarantee that your nephew won't steal something again if you allow him in your home. Not the idiot, and if they have enough savings for a cheap motel, then why didn't they use that to get themselves out of debt in their previous home? They have much more money now due to selling off your engagement ring. Call the police. Hand the video evidence over and let them know where your brother is staying so they can have a chat with him. Maybe seeing the cops rock up and knock on your motel room door will scare the kid enough to be honest. OP, you're not the idiot. I suspect your brother knows exactly what happened to the ring because he found it when his son took it and then he pawned it. My theory is the parents are teaching this to the kid, knowing it's not likely a kid will get in any serious trouble. Hard times make people do stupid crap and pawning your brother's $4,000 ring is mighty stupid. I used to wear heavy makeup every day before the global issue, but then I just stopped. Staying home broke me of the habit. Before that, I felt embarrassed to be seen without makeup. I had to put on a face to feel comfortable. I even started getting lip filler. That changed during the pandemic. At first, by coincidence, staying home, I just started getting used to seeing my own face every day. And after a while, I realized I was happy with my own face. And when I put on makeup, I felt like I was in costume. I also started to resent the fact that beauty standards influenced me so much that I felt like I had to be hiding my own face in the past. I threw out most of my makeup as it was expiring. I'd always said, I do my makeup for myself, it's my hobby. But I started looking more critically at that and how my hobby just happened to fit into standards for how a woman should look. I heard the metaphor, decorating your own cage, and it really resonated with me. Anyway, I met my boyfriend a year ago, well into my makeup-free phase, and we stayed pretty socially isolated for a while. But just this spring, we've started getting more social again, and going out or to parties. And recently, I was showing him old pictures of some outfits I thought could work for a couple's costume for a party. He seemed kind of wowed by how I looked, full face of makeup, dyed blonde hair, long extensions, lip filler, etc. He compared me to an Instagram model. I know he meant it as a compliment, but it didn't feel good to hear. He asked me if I could do my hair and makeup like that for him sometimes. I told him a lot about how I felt about my relationship with makeup, and I was pretty upset to hear him say afterwards that what he was asking for wasn't that deep. He didn't want me to change my whole face every day, just put in a bit of extra effort for special events. I said it was deeper than that to me, Plus, I don't think he realised how much extra effort he was asking for. So, I said I'd wear makeup again on a few conditions. For the first six months, he buys any makeup that he wants me to wear that I don't currently own. He learns how to apply it to me. There are videos, that's how I learned. He applies my makeup. I said that that way, he'd understand the work behind what he was asking of me. 
And also, I have to understand that if he wanted me to change his appearance to suit him, he'd be acknowledging that and acknowledging the ways he would like me to look different by doing that work himself. He said that wasn't fair. He didn't know how. I said nobody is born knowing how. I learned myself and so could he if it mattered to him. He's been kind of frustrated with me since and feels like I'm being lazy. Am I the idiot for what I said about makeup? Not the idiot. Stand your ground. You're 100% right, and if you decide that even with him doing the work, you don't want to hide who you are, then you have no obligation to continue. It's your face and body. He is being shallow. Oh, and make him practice on himself. He needs to not only know how much work it is, he needs to feel what having that much makeup on feels like. Tell him he can look like a male Instagram model, six pack. Totally fair. You weren't born knowing how to do makeup. And his saying that the makeup you is prettier than the real you is kind of mean. Don't decorate the cage your boyfriend wants to build around you. You are not a doll for him to dress and make up as he likes. Don't offer conditions. Draw boundaries. OP, just draw yourself a clown makeup once and tell him you unlearned it during the pandemic. Also, if I were you, I'd drop him. It would be a bit different if you did wear makeup occasionally, and he asked for you to wear it to special events as well but he literally wants you to buy a whole new kit and start doing something you don't even like just for his benefit. The audacity. I, 26 female, work in a yard with horses and mostly give lessons to either adults or those with experience. I do not teach kids. I also have my own horse stabled there, who's also a competition horse. The yard gives lessons to people. However, to book a lesson, they either need to call or message us or fill in the form on our website with the information about themselves, such as age, experience, height and weight, so we can make sure they're riding a suitable horse. We had instances where people lied about their riding experience or height and weight, and as a result, they were put on an unsuitable horse or pony. The most recent one was for a lady with experience in riding, but she booked for her kid who had never sat on a horse before and didn't tell us. So, the horse prepared for the lesson was way too difficult for the child and not suitable. So, to the actual event. I was finishing riding my horse earlier today, which is fairly small for his breed and is a stallion. As some mares, female horses, are getting in season, he has a bit of a reaction to them. It's also worth noting that I'm fairly short and sometimes people confuse me with a teenager. And due to me and my horse being short and comfortable, I've invested in some good quality equipment, including a saddle that fits him and me. To put it bluntly, anyone over a certain height and weight will feel really cramped and not comfortable in it, as it will feel very tight. As I was finishing, a woman with a child approached me. She asks if her daughter can ride my horse and have a lesson on him. Her daughter is early teens, taller and bigger than me. Plus, my horse is a private horse and a stallion, so I say no. Instead, I tell her she can book through the receptionist and the receptionist lady can check if we have horses suitable for her daughter. The lady didn't like it. She said she'd booked my horse. I tell her again it's impossible as the horse is a private horse and her daughter cannot ride him. She then said she knew the owner and the owner said it was okay to ride him. I'm getting fed up with this and my horse is getting impatient. So I tell her I am the owner of the horse and her daughter will not be riding him as she is too big for him and the tack and doesn't have enough experience. The lady starts swearing and calling me names. I'm just trying to leave at this point until one of the other instructors, Katie, comes to my rescue. The lady tries to rant about me to the other instructor, but Katie repeats what I said about the strict weight, height and experience policy. Finally, the woman called Katie and me idiots and left. She later left a bad review. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's not body shaming to tell someone they're too big to ride a particular horse since, one, it can cause the horse to develop serious back problems, and two, you just said the kid was too big, not too fat, and you were also looking out for the kid's safety. I wouldn't put a child on a horse that was too small either, let alone a stallion. All of this, plus the fact that it's your private horse, makes this mom 100% the idiot and I would let the barn owner know about this incident if you haven't already. God, it's your private horse. She was just entitled and should have said, oh, sorry, my mistake, and go to the horse she actually rented. Some people are just entitled idiots. There's nothing you can do about it and no reason to feel bad because their snit didn't bear fruit. I love people who know the owner-manager, lol, 
then not even react when the owner or manager walks right by them. The woman lied to your face. She knows the owner. Not to mention that your horse can't be booked as it isn't part of the rental herd. People have to start understanding that their body type matters in some activities, especially if the activities also require another living being. My 25 male girlfriend, 23, and her daughter's father broke up almost two years ago. Their daughter just turned three, and she put in a petition for child support a little over a year ago because when they broke up, she had to buy mostly all new things for their child. The father agreed to help, but ended up leaving my girlfriend to pay for everything alone. Support was finally settled, and he owes her $6,000 in back pay, and instead of paying it back in increments, he offered to pay it in full. My girlfriend was so excited, she said she was going to pay off credit cards that she fell behind on because she struggled financially, as well as to use the money to find an apartment and get clothes for herself because she hadn't gotten new clothes since she had her daughter because she couldn't afford it, except for things I've bought her. She then said the rest would go into savings for her daughter. I told her that all of the money needs to go into savings for her daughter or be used for things for their child because that's her daughter's money, not hers. She gave me a pretty nasty glare and said, No, this is my money. I'm being reimbursed for struggling alone since I put in the petition. I can spend the money however I please and I'm not doing it recklessly, so why does it matter? She was pretty upset and has been pretty short with me since. I think what she's doing is pretty idiot behaviour while she thinks I'm the idiot for overstepping and not considering how much financial hardship she's gone through. Now I wonder if I am the idiot for telling my girlfriend that she's spending her child support money irresponsibly. Not the idiot. It's literally called child support. Money should go to the kid and not her personal wants. However, while your advice is good advice, it's also not your place to tell her what she should do with the back pay unless she asks for your opinion or she owes you money. If neither of those applies, then keep your mouth shut. You are the idiot. She went into debt to provide for her child because the father was a deadbeat. She has a right to settle that debt and make sure she puts a roof over both their heads and maybe gets a couple of new shirts since she probably also works and needs to look presentable. Agree. The child's needs include a home, utilities, a mother that is healthy and financial stability. The mom's credit cards took a hit to cover the child's needs. Paying those off is not being reckless or stealing money from her child. Do you think she should just stay in debt and not find a home for her and her child? Neither of those options is good for the kid in the long run. You sound incredibly out of touch.